Hey, welcome back everyone. Um, thank you for joining me this evening. Um, we're going to get started right away on this week's journey. Um, it is a membership drive. We're building a handbook, a genetic, a genetic genealogy handbook. And so this is going to help guide you through uh, GEDmatch and autosomals and uh, admixture, which is is based on your autosomal results. It's going to help you understand a little bit better um, why DNA, mtDNA. Um, it'll explain and help you through um, the different tests, the, t the, the different tests, why DNA, mtDNA, autosomals, and what admixture actually is, and haplogroup. We talked about Hapo Group last week. Um, I believe that was episode four. Um, and you can watch that at your leisure at YouTube or at our event on Facebook, uh, The Journey. Otherwise, today we are going to work on a jet match, match, matching segments. So I'm going to move through what matching segments are. I know we have done this once before, and I used Brandon Nash's um, matches to me, and it was a very simple one. So this one is not so simple. Um, this one is, um, we have 25 matching segments, okay? Because we were an endogamous people, um, practiced endogamy, Many of us are related many, many ways uh, through the same family. And not only that perspective, but also the perspective of the fact that many of our Y-DNA males are actually turning out to be the same, even though they might have had different surnames like our goings. Uh, that I have just coined as G-O-Y-E-N-S because that's the way it was spelled a lot in Louisiana purchase and as well as um, Texas, te Mexican Texas, Spanish Texas, Tejas, and all the way through the Republic of Texas. Okay, and so um, this Goins line, Y-DNA, was an exact match to the same interrelated family Y DNA surname as Sweat, Williams, Warwick, Williams, Warwick, Powell, who was known as Osceola. He obviously was not a, a Powell as he had professed when he was alive. Um, and we've talked about this before here. Um, on some of the previous videos um, about the Goins book, which is being written. Um, but what my point of this is, is that when we have so many matching segments, um, we, we know where we're ha what's happening is, is we're getting to a certain level and we're descending from those same couples many, many ways. And I'm going to identify those couples up here because I find that through all of these matches that my father and I, my, you know, I use my father's DNA mostly um, because mine includes my mother. But um, through all of these matches is that, you know, we, if we match on one or two segments, one or two chromosomes, then it seems like we have four or five or six. And it's because we come from this I'm beginning to identify the between the third and the fifth great grandparents. We have a huge intermarriage uh, junction right there, and then we continue to intermarry. But this seems to be a lot of our ex extended cousin matches through Jed match. So it's a little ways back there, third to fifth, and it's about at our fifth great grandparents is where I'm noticing it. And I will show that line to you today. I hope I get through all of this because it's going to be very intense. It's going to be very long. We're going to try to match up all 25 segments. I have not pre-done this work. So, um, and for one reason, because I'm pretty familiar with his pedigree. 
um, who I um, put up against me. And so I worked on his pedigree a little bit last night and today um, because I did have um, some materials that belonged, you know, in his line, the Jeffries. And um, so I, I also found a, another a relation through his Jeffries line uh, to the um, uh, to the Cross family, which is actually matches my dad um, on his Stringer line, and so I did identify an extra line just working through um, some pedigree that I extended pedigree for Don Nash that I did not previously have, and so that's always important that you know sometimes you might be the only one working on your matches. It might be that the other person isn't interested in working on those matches or they don't know how or they don't have the time and you're more dedicated. And so um, I encourage you to familiarize yourself with these. When you have this kind of matches, 25 segments, you really need to kind of familiarize yourself with their pedigree as well as yours and, and where you know initially that you cross. But um, Today you will need several printouts, and I hope you guys are printing these out. Um, this is a, the pedigree charts that we have provided through our journey, and it gives you an area where you can work through the segments and, and put them in this format uh, uh, in the notes section, Jed Match Notes on the right, and then you'll have the kit number and and some other area to add some things. This pedigree is not quite big enough, um, but if you take out, if you get several copies, then you can transfer from one, you know, to the lower one if you're working on them. I've found there's ways I can work around it, but um, I will be developing and have developed um, a seven or eight generation pedigree that will be much larger than this and so I'm hoping to get it developed for your use in the handbook um, but I haven't gotten it completed and then secondly you for this work today to work through these today you will need your Jed match pick someone that you have know that you have what just one or two segments on um, and, and even if you know where your connection is go ahead and work through it so that you can kind of familiarize yourself with these um, procedures and steps of how to get to your matches. And so you will need, this is what I did, sorry about the pages, but you know, this is just a printout of our Jed, Jed Match autosomal comparison between my father, who is Pod Redbone, and Donald Nash, who is um, one of our cousins. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use this board and I'm going to lay out the comparisons uh, over here on this side of the board. And then I'm going to try to work the pedigree for Don. And hopefully I can get both of our pedigrees in here, but we will just have to see. Um, I hope that you're all able to um, see the board well and hear me. I noticed that in the videos, whenever I turn my back, um, it's a little muffled. So um, I'll try to speak directly to you and let you know what I'm doing. All right. I've got the timer set on one hour or approximately one hour. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all of this into one hour, but I will certainly try. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, if you will get um, your worksheets together, I hope that you have them. If not, I'm sure you can make shift. I'm sure that you can make shift a pedigree 
and write down your segments so that you can transfer those to a worksheet. Okay, and then do, please do print a worksheet. And so now what I'm looking for is my little cheat sheets. Yeah, you also need this. You will need your cheat sheet. And I suppose that mine has run off somewhere through legs. I know that can't be true. Well, goodness. Um, you now, right before my eyes, there was this snake here when it hit me. I'm sure of it. Okay, and so what also you will need today is this work cheat sheet that we've been using to make our comparisons um, to find out which level your segments fall on. So. When you get your GED match together, you need this once you find out your shared centimorgans. So that will tell you approximately where in your pedigree, what generation away, you are from this person's grandparents that you match. Okay, so we're just going to work through very quickly. I hope I'm going to record my segments. Now remember, please, that... We are an endogamous tribe of people who intermarried for probably more than 600 years on these shores. Um, so we're going to have a lot of in common uh, repetitive and half matches and this kind of thing. But these are really good worksheets to, to work through for you guys so that you can see how we're able to figure out how people are connected. And so you can do it for yourself. All right. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do, like I said, is I am going to put the matching chromosome levels over here. So. And then you can also be working on, on yours as well while I do this. So Donald Nash and his kit number for comparison is T8. And that is a one. Um, Eight, two, zero, three, seven. Okay, that's correct. And then my father's is Colonel Stringer. His number is, I hope that you guys can see that. All right. Um,
Okay, so that's my our kit numbers, and you need to record that on your worksheet. There's an area there for you to record that on your worksheet. So. Okay, so on chromosome level one, we have 6.7 and we have 29.8. On chromosome four, we have what we call a half match at 22.6, excuse me, 23.6. And then on left chromosome five, we have one, two, three matches. So we have a 12.0, we have an 11.4 and we have a 4.6. All right, and on chromosome six, we have an 11.4 and we have a 9.3. And on chromosome seven, we have a 12.4 and an 11.7. And then on chromosome eight, we have another half match on eight, which is 3.5. chromosome 9, we have two matches, 3.5 and 5.0. And then on chromosome 10, we have a 9.7. And then chromosome 11, we have one, two, three, three matches at 21.9, 7.6, and 9.1. Chromosome 12, we have three matches. Nineteen point four, sixteen point six, and twenty. This should be twenty four. Sixteen point six. All right, and then we go over to chromosome thirteen. We have one half batch. At 16.8, and then chromosome 14, we have another half match at 22.6, and then chromosome 15, we have a three way match at 4.4. 
10.8 and 7.3. Okay. And and let me just say that that let me add this, okay, because what has happened is why I'm doing Don Nash, why it, this is significant today. I had actually promised Marilyn, cousin Marilyn, to work my dad's because she has 12 matching segments with dad. And she was so excited to see how those panned out. Um, however, uh, Don, I went to see Don while I was in Texas. And, um, he, I don't know if he, he's just misunderstanding uh, why DNA and cousin matches. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to do his because he he's having a little trouble understanding all of this stuff. Um, I know everybody's struggling, but some of our older, you know, um, generations are, are having a terrible time with it. Okay, so I'm going to work his pedigree first, and these are the matching chromosomes, and what I guess what I should actually do um, is figure out where we match. Uh, it looks like everything is going to be, all of the shared chromosomes look like they're going to be down in group H. Looks like our our biggest matching segment is this twenty nine point eight, which is right here on chromosome one, and and I already know from working pet matches and pedigrees that chromosome one and chromosome ten are where I'm matching the Nash family, or where my dad's matching matching his Nash, Nash families. Okay, and so all of these are still going to work out to be a third cousin once removed, in one shape or way. Um, let me see, let me make sure on that 29.8, which was the highest, I chromosome one. Now, that's still within the range of third cousin once removed. So we can basically say that, and here we go, because this is the ex exact example that I'm getting to here um, with these endogamous people, is that this is all going to fall in our fourth great grandparent range. And when we get out there to fourth great grandparent range, we're going to run into a lot of our ancestors whose Y DNA male lines match one another. And so even though they had a different surname, they come from the same progenitor. So, you know, this is pretty unique to our people. You know, this interrelatedness or it's unique to a tribe. And so this is why I stress to everyone, stop concentrating all of your resources into one line. You are going to have to study all the lines of the red bone, Melungeon, Dominicker, Brass Ankles, um, Van, Van, uh, the ones up there, uh, the Moors of Delaware, all of these people match us and are interrelated many, many times. The Ghoul Towners, that's where we're going to run into a bunch of this up in Chair Ross and a bunch up from the Ghoul Towners, you know, that came out of Maryland with uh, the Cheryls and the Perkins and um, so forth and so on. So um, it's, it's really good to not only know your particular line of genealogy, but also be familiar with the other lines that intermarried with us. Um, I know so many times I never knew I came from brother Willis I went for many years saying well I don't I, you know I'm one of the only ones that because 
I can I never knew it until Gabe um, some years ago said, Hey no, you know, he married Mary Willis and she was the daughter of Father Willis, Brother Willis. Um, we called him the matchmaker, but anyway, um, I'm gonna get started really quickly. I'm gonna um, start with Dawn's pedigree, and this is where I want you to go. Once you figure this out and you understand that these symptom organs are going to tell you approximately in your genealogy what generation where your where your matches are. And so I may move the camera out just a little bit. Um, let me see. Um, because so that you can see all of the board. Okay, that helps a little, it looks like. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's a little bit better. I hope my writing is not too small. If it is, you'll have to just um, stop the video and I will leave an opportunity at the end when we get all done, you know, to let you have some time to make sure you've got all your notes correct. Okay, so we're going to get started with Dawn Nash's pedigree. So I'm going to try to work up here for Dawn and then work down here for my dad. So let me see how far I'm getting down. Okay, so there's a little bit down there. So all of these segments um, are going to be third cousins once removed. Okay, so all of them are going to fall in between the third and fifth generation uh, great grandparents. So, start with Dawn. Dawn. Yeah. And his mother. His mother was. I know who his mother was. Bessie Jaffries. And there's lots of ways that Jaffrey is spelled. And it's Jeffries, Jaffries with an S, without an S, a Jeff or a Jaff. Uh, they're all pretty much um, come from the same families. Um, you know, it's the same surname. Okay, so. And then his father was Robert or Rob Sweat, or excuse me, Rob Nash. Okay. And then Rob's Nat, Rob's father was Emmanuel Nash. We called him we called him command, um, but not all of the other families know him by that, but that's what my family called him. And um, it's the most prominent name that we use for him as a man. And it was just because he was bossy. I think that's what they said. Um, and his mother, or yeah, Robert, his mother was the same as mine. So Matilda, Dilly, Sweat. All right now, Matilda Tilly Sweat's mother was the Burgess, Elizabeth Burgess. And her father was Leonard Covington Sweat.
Emmanuel's father was, let me erase that on the top. And I know this is getting very small writing, so um, I'm hoping you can follow from there. Emmanuel Nash's mother, her father, was James. And his mother was Mary Holly Perkins. All right. Now I'm going to move down here to Desi for just a minute. And I'm going to tell you about Desi because I do have a crossover with Desi's line as well. So Desi's father was James Franklin Jeffrey. And her mother was Olivia Strain. And they came out of the Virginias into Alabama. And so I, I'm fairly confident that they also followed our same migration. Um, I don't know who Olivia Strain's mother and father were, but I know who James Franklin and his father and mother were. His father was James Bishop. I'm just going to put James B. All right, and his mother was Mary Ann Hallam. is awfully small. Thinking about reworking that because it's no help to you if you can't read it. I guess I'll just expand a little bit when I get out here. James Nash was the son of Thomas Nash. And his mother was Emily Slater. Okay, and so let's talk about the findings on Emily Slater. There was some things that went around the internet, um, Yahoo groups a number of years ago that talked about, oh, we don't know Thomas was married to Emily Slater. We certainly do. There is a marriage record, so any of that questioning was ridiculous. Um, he was married to both Emily Slater and Anna Goins. Um, but James, we know for sure, came from Emily Slater because of further cousin connections where we're matching back through Benjamin, who was a different mother on half matches. So we're confident that Thomas Nash was certainly married to Emily Slater first, and then he was married to Anna Gomez second. 
Okay, and so I, I'm hoping that everyone can see that. Let me look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just not sure how great y'all are going to grasp all of that. But um, I'm going to try to expand out here a little bit. Thomas was the son of Thomas and probably Betsy or um, probably um, Alumbi. But I don't know for sure. Um, but it be, she may have been um, a Lawson because we have a lot of information on Lucy Lawson being married to a Thomas Nash. And so, but there were several, so I'm not going to say for sure one way or the other. But uh, eventually, this not Nash line goes back to John Nash, who was. Uh, an Indian trader for George Washington, and um, there's been some disagreement on that as well, but whatever, because Y-DNA says that that's who they are, that they match that one of the same men who descended from John and plain John and um, not the one that came from England either. So this this group of men have an E haplo. Um, so it's completely un, um, been dis mis disproved that the Nashes came from that certain family that were loyal European Nash family. They they weren't that. But um, let me see if I can open this up a little bit better. So. Now, um, Mary Polly Perkins was the daughter of, all we know is Nancy Perkins. And this is the Nancy that is buried at Glass Window Cemetery. Okay, and then let's get down to Leonard Covington Sweat. Leonard Covington Sweat, his father was Gideon. And his mother was Leticia or Letty Johnson. Yeah, I think I'm going to redo this. I'm going to stop for a few minutes and I'm going to use the first of this. I'm going to lay this out better. Um, because I just got started too high, and it's going to be terrible on the other end. Okay, I'll be back in just a little bit, but I'll go ahead and upload this video, and maybe it'll give you a few minutes to get any supplies that you might need together and have your uh, jet match comparisons done. See you in a little bit.